Trinity. Children. 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 Yes, abide in Christ. I'm very happy to welcome you all to this morning's special Sunday service. This is the children's ministry of the Trinity United Church, an interdenominational church situated on the Trinity Theological Seminary campus. And as you've heard from the beginning, our greeting is children, and then the children respond, abide in Christ. As you can see, children, today, we are not together so you didn't hear teachers responding to my greeting but god is so wonderful even when we cannot come together to bring a recording to you we are bringing it from our homes to you i hope you enjoy this very special edition of our church service and you remain blessed as you know, I will tell you, go for your Bibles if you don't have them, your hymn books, your notebooks, your pens, and your pencils. Also, remember to call a friend to tell them service has started. We begin the service in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I didn't hear you. Amen. All right, let us enter into a time of prayer. Everybody close your eyes. You know I'll tell you to close your eyes because this is not the time to watch me. Close your eyes and focus on God. Forget about all that is happening around you. Just focus on God. Think of his goodness unto you. He has been so gracious. He has been so merciful, protected us and brought us this far. He has provided our needs. He is awesome. I hope this time that you have been home has given you opportunity to think of all the things God created. Look at the trees. The birds that you hear singing, focus on the greatness of God and worship him. Adore his holy name. Tell him how much you love him. Like you would tell mommy and daddy, yes, tell God how much you love him. We come before his throne. And we are to be clean because we know God loves us, but he doesn't love the sin that we keep committing. So let us pray that God will forgive us our sins and cleanse us so we can come before his throne of grace and continue to worship him and continue to save him. Let's pray for forgiveness of our sins. We want to thank him that he's a God of all things. He's got all things in his hands. We want to thank him for his goodness and his mercy. We want to thank him for the prayers he has answered for us so far. At this point, I want you to bring your parents, your siblings, your friends before God. Pray for them. Pray that God will protect them. Pray for your school teachers, even though you are not going to school. Pray for your Sunday school teachers. Pray for the government so that every decision they take will be one that will bring Peace to this nation. 
will bring progress to this nation and will bring healing to us. Let's pray for our minister in charge and counsel. Let's pray for the entire church. That even though we are at home, God will be with each and every person. That the things of the church will not come to a standstill. You know, we are the church, not the Sunday school block, not the church building. We, the people, are the church. Let's pray that God will use us to bless many others, even as we are home at this time. Let's bring all sick people we know about before God. Let's pray that he himself will stretch forth his hand and heal them. Let's pray for anyone going through any form of challenge that God himself will bring restoration to them. We continue to pray. Bring this service before the Lord Almighty. Commit the service into his care. Tell God that yes, you are sitting at home, but you want his spirit to minister to you through the teachers who are bringing the word to you today. Tell him you want to feel his presence like never before. He is the reason why we bring you this message, even though you are at home. So tell him you want to meet him. You want that personal relationship. You want that personal time. You want that personal experience. You want to fill him for yourself. I want you now to bring your own needs to God in prayer. Trust him that he will do it for you. And he will do it indeed. We wait for you to bring us all your testimonies to the prayers you've been saying, you've been saying this time at home. Shall we pray? Our Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you, we bless you, we glorify your name. We magnify your name, Lord, for you are great and you are mighty. Lord, we hear the wind blow, we see the leaves move, we hear the birds sing, and it's all in worshipping you, adoring you, and all in exaltation of your mighty name. We join all these creatures of yours to say hallelujah to your mighty name. To say, Lord, you are awesome and worthy of all our praise. Father, even as we come before you to bring your word to your children, it is our prayer, Lord, that you yourself will come and deliver your message. Father, bring healing to where there is sickness or disability. Father, bring restoration where there is stress and anxiety. Father, meet us all at the point of our needs. We pray that, Lord, Ghana as a nation, you will guard and guide us, protect us, even as we use Ghana as a point of contact to the whole world, and deliver us from this COVID-19 pandemic. Father, we have humbled ourselves before you. Please heal our land and restore us. Please give us the goodness, Lord, that only you can give in this land of the living. We thank you. We bless you. We know that you will take absolute control of this service. And we shall be careful to give you all the glory. We thank you. In Jesus' mighty name have we prayed. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. Amen. Today, Auntie Dorcas will bring us the message for Ezekiel class, which is the class for children under five, and then the primary class. After Auntie Dorcas, Auntie Julie will bring us the message for the seniors class. After that, I'll come back to give us an announcement. But before that, I think there's a very important song. Some of you know it, some of you don't. So I'll teach the song so we can use it even as we stay at home. It is very relevant to the message for today. So get ready, get your pens, your pencils, your notebooks. But remember, as I always say, you can come back when the service is done to do it. So here we go. So the words say, when he calls me, I will answer. And this is three times. So you put into brackets three times. I'll be somewhere working for my God. I'll be somewhere praying. I'll be somewhere teaching. I'll be somewhere working for my God. I'll be somewhere preaching. I'll be somewhere serving. I'll be somewhere working for my God. So it's very easy. I'm going to sing through. You can come back and learn the words. And I think I'll find a way of also putting the words up on the internet so you can easily copy it. So it goes like this. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere working for my God. I'll be somewhere praying. I'll be somewhere teaching. I'll be somewhere working for my God. I'll be somewhere preaching. I'll be somewhere serving. I'll be somewhere working for my God. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere working for my God. I'll be somewhere praying. I'll be somewhere teaching. I'll be somewhere working for my God. I'll be somewhere preaching. I'll be somewhere serving. I'll be somewhere working for my God. Did you enjoy it? I'm sure you did. Make sure you come back and learn it all. And then when we come back to Sunday school, we'll sing it together. You realize that this song is very relevant to our teaching today. Let us invite Auntie Dorcas to bring us the message. Thank you. Children, abide in Christ. As we all know, Today is Sunday and unfortunately we couldn't come to church together to fellowship with Christ. But then, must we not worship God because we can't come together? No, as we are in our various homes, we can also share the word of God. Today I bring the word of God to you in your homes. I hope you are happy. Me, I know you are happy. I don't even have to ask. I know you are very, very, very happy as I'm also very, very happy. As you know, I'm Auntie Dockers and I'm taking Ezekiel and primary class. Today I'm combining two classes, that is the Ezekiel and the primary class. Before we go on, can we remind ourselves of what we did last week? Yes, we learned about the resurrection of Christ. Our memory verse was taken from Matthew 28 verse 6 which says, he is not here. He is risen from the dead. Today, our theme for today is Jesus reinstates Peter. Before we move on to our story, let's sing one action song. Love is a flag. I hope you are ready. Since you've been home, please get up and shake your body. Love is a flag. Ready? Go. Love is a flag flying high over the castle of my heart. 
over the castle of my heart over the castle of my heart love is a flag flying high over the castle of my heart for the king is the resident there so let us fly so let us fly in the sky let the whole world know let the whole world know let the whole world know so let us fly in the sky let the whole world know for the king is in residence there mm. very good today our memory verse is different the ezekiel class is different from that of the primary class so we'll take the memory verse one after the other starting with the junior class junior class i hope you have your books your pencils your pens and your bibles anything that you will need as you are being instructed to bring them along every sunday so please put this down john 21 verse 15 john 21 verse 15 Are you writing it? John 21 verse 15. Jesus asked Simon Peter. Jesus asked Simon Peter. Simon, son of John. Do you love me more than this? John 21:15. I'm taking it for the last time. John 21, 15. Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? John 21, verse 15. I hope you got it. Now, under five. Your lesson is taken from John 21 verse 16. So you know from 50, we move to 16. So John 21, 16, say after me. Again, John 21, 16. And it says, again, Jesus said, again, Jesus said, are you saying it? I can't hear you all. Again, Jesus said, or you want some actions okay so again jesus said again jesus said simon son of john simon son of john do you love me do you love me take care of my sheep again Take care of my sheep. John 21, 16. Amen. Oh, amen. I can't hear the amen. Oh, amen. Very good. I know you can say this on your own. Or you can't say it. I know you people are so smart. So you can say it on your own. So, we are moving on to today's lesson. We said what? Jesus reinstates Peter. When we say reinstate, what do we mean? All that we are trying to say is to what? Restore or to put together, to put back together. To put back together. Exactly. You forgot me. See, you 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 are so happy you want to listen to the to the to, to the story. You forgotten that we've not learned our hymn for today. We have to sing our hymn, oh, you know, every, nowadays, every Sunday, we, we learn a hymn before we continue with our studies. So today, our, our hymn will be taken from MHB 110, Jesus, lover of my soul. Jun junior class, primary class, I know you people have the voice, okay? So please sing it loudly so that your siblings can join you. Jesus, lover of my soul, ready, go. Jesus, lover of my soul, let me to thy bosom fly, while the nearer waters roll, while the tempest is high. Hide me, O oh my Savior, hide, till the stop of life be past. Sink into the heaven guide. Oh, receive my soul at last. Ah, and the 
Yes, we did even better than the junior class. I want you to clap for yourselves. Clap very hard, though. Clap for yourselves. Let your senior brothers and sisters know that you know how to sing the song very well. I'm so happy to be teaching you today. So today, I'm going to ask you a question. Did you know that Peter was a fisherman? Are you sure you, knew, you know? Then let me tell you the story. Peter was once a fisherman before he became a follower of Christ. Have you forgotten this song? Peter, James, and John in the sailing boat. Peter, James, and John in the sailing boat. Peter, James, and John in the sailing boat. Over the rolling sea, they fished all night, but they caught no fishes. They fished all night, but they caught no fishes. They fished all night, but they caught no fishes. Over the rolling sea. Along came Jesus on the seashore. Along came Jesus on the seashore. Along came Jesus on the seashore. Over the rolling sea. You cast your net at the other side now. Cast your net at the other side now. Cast your net at the other side now. Over the rolling sea. And what happened? They caught a Boat load full of fishes. They caught a boat load full of fishes. They caught a boat load full of fishes over the rolling sea. So, like the song is saying, Peter was once a fisherman. Now, last week's Friday, we learned about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. On Sunday, we remembered the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, when Jesus had resurrected, Peter went back to fishing. Why would Peter go back to fishing? Well, I don't also know why he went back to fishing. But what I know is Peter lost hope after the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. He lost hope. He knew that mm, this is my father that I'm following. He's now dead though and he will go and join his father in heaven. Now let me go back to my fishing. That's the only thing that gives me something to eat, something to feed my family. So if I don't go fishing, what will I eat? After all, the person I'm following, he's no more. So he lost hope. Imagine you are being asked to move from your school to another school. How would you feel? If it was to be me, I'll feel very bad. Why? Because I'm leaving all my friends and joining another school. Now I'm not going to see all my friends again. I can't come to my school. I can't go back to my previous school. I can't do anything. I can't call them. I can't hear the, their voice. We can't talk. We can't chit chat. We can't gossip anymore. So I'll feel very bad and I'll lose all hope because I won't see them. I don't even know the time I'll see them again. That is what happened to Peter. So Peter decided to go back to fishing. When he said this, he didn't go alone. Some of the disciples also decided to do what? To follow him. Hey! Now I said, I'm going somewhere. Then other people, my siblings will be following me. That's the same thing that happened. Oh. So Peter went with other disciples. When they were fishing, Jesus appeared to them. Jesus appeared, like the son said, he said that they fish all night, but they, they caught no fishes. So when Jesus appeared to them, he asked them to do what? Cast their nets at the other side. They caught what? A boat full of fishes. Now Jesus asked them to bring some of the fishes so that they can do what? Roast and eat it with bread. As they were eating, they had a small meeting. And at the end of the meeting, Jesus asked Peter a question. Do you know the question that Jesus asked Peter? Can you guess? This one day, if you guess, cry, you know, no. But the thing is in your memory verse, so I know some of you are smart, very, very smart. He asked, Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Jesus asked Peter three times. He asked Peter three times. And then Peter said, yes, Jesus, I love you and I will take care of your sheep. That is what Simon Peter said to Jesus now I'm asking you if you were the one what would you say would you say yes to Jesus or your answer will be different from what Peter said well if your answer is yes I want to say that that is a good choice because that's the same thing Peter said again do you know why Jesus asked Peter three times because Peter 
as a follower of Jesus Christ before his crucifixion. He promised Jesus that he's going to die for him, but he betrayed Jesus. At the moment where Jesus was about to be crucified, he told people that he never knew this man. He has never seen this man before. Me, this man, I don't know him more. He was denied Jesus because he was afraid to be crucified together with Jesus. Sometimes this is what we do. Sometimes we leave our families. Sometimes we leave our friends as well in times of need. We leave them to face difficulties alone. And it's very bad. We need to put a stop to it as well. Jesus then, after asking Peter, will you feed my sheep? What is the sheep that Jesus is talking about? These are people to be cared for. The needy, the sick. It could be your parents, your friends, your loved one. Anyone who is in need, remember Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 says, Not everyone who calls me what? Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of God, but those who do what? Oh, louder. Say it louder. I want to hear it, but those who do what? Very good. But those who do the will of God. You people are so good, though. You are very smart. You know everything in the Bible. So that is the thing. The will of God is for us to care for other people. He said that if you don't do this thing, you are not going to enter into the kingdom of God. Please and please, I beg you, let's say yes to Jesus and make sure that we care for other people. Remember that Peter once did what? Betray Jesus. Do you think it ended there? Would have Jesus appeared to him again and reinstate him? No. When Peter wronged Jesus, he went down on his knees. He cried unto God. He prayed for forgiveness of sin and God forgave him. That is why we need to be honest whenever we wrong Jesus Christ. We need to be honest about our sins. For the Bible says that if we say we've no sins, then we, the, we, there is no truth in us. But if we confess our sins unto thee, he is faithful and just to forgive us all of our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness deeds. Today, I pray that we will be honest to God and then go before Him and confess our sins unto Him. He has promised us that if we confess our sins to Him, He will forgive us our sins. I want to say something small. I know as little as you are, you know, you don't think about the future. The future doesn't scare you that much because you know, oh, mommy is there. Mommy will provide for me. My daddy will buy me everything that I need. But then your parents, they fear for the teacher. Well, me, I also fear for the future. So as your teachers, they fear for the, te for, for the future. But then God has assured us something. He said that if we are in him and he is in us, we shouldn't do what? We shouldn't fear. And so he promised us in Matthew chapter 28 verse 20 that do not be afraid for i will be with you till the end of the world that is what he said he said i will be with you till the end of the world so we have an assurance that if we have god in us and he is in us he will be with us till the end of the world today god is telling me to tell you that as children as we are whenever god gives us a second chance we should never disappoint him, but rather do the right thing. God is also telling us to care for others. We shouldn't we, we should be able to to share with others. We should love others. That is what God is asking us to do. And so I'm leaving today to you once again. As Jesus asked Peter, Will you take care of my sheep? I am asking you, children's service under fives junior class would you take care of my sheep can mommy leave the house can mommy trust you with the house and your other siblings in the house can mommy trust you like the way jesus trusted peter to take care of the ships can mommy and daddy trust you to take care of your studies without constant supervision and so you excel can your teachers also trust you with your other colleagues can you stand in for your teachers before they come to church if you can then i'm saying that god bless you as well as we know god has called all of us and the gift that he has given us we have to use it to serve him 
And so I am asking you this song. We've asked, we've sung this song before, and we are going to sing it again. Have you ever said yes? Have you ever said yes? Have you ever said yes to Jesus? Have you ever said no to the devil? And so, have you ever said yes to Jesus? I'm asking you, have you said yes to Jesus? Are you sure you've said yes to Jesus? Have you said no to the devil? If no, then have you said yes to Jesus? This day, I want you to search through your hearts. Listen to God's word. And whenever you hear his voice, whenever you hear his word, I want you to obey and say yes to Jesus. Amen. Now, I want us to pray. We are praying. We are praying. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Say your prayers. Say your prayers. We are praying. Please don't look at my face. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to listen to your word. Father, not everyone could live to see this day. But, oh Lord, you have been gracious unto your children. And so we say, Father, we are grateful. Today, your word has come to us. The Father, you reinstated Peter. We give ourselves to you. For, Father, for you to reinstate us, we pray that may you open our ears. May you open our minds that whenever we hear your voice, we will be obedient to your word. Whenever we hear your voice, we will say yes to you. And then we will care for others and take care of your sheep. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, the day I has ended. As you can see, I'm applying my sanitizer. I pray that you continue to adhere to the rules that the government has given us and surely this shall also pass and we'll come together as one family. Thank you and have a wonderful week. Children, children, we thank God for another wonderful opportunity for granting us another day to be here once again. We are grateful for Auntie Dockers and we want to say God bless her. Over the past few weeks, we've been looking at the topic, the ultimate sacrifice. And we have considered the various topics. The humble king on the donkey, Christ died on the cross, the risen Christ, and today we are going to consider Jesus reinstates Peter. Jesus reinstates Peter. Today is the first Sunday after Easter, and under the theme for the month, the ultimate sacrifice. The topic I earlier on indicated this morning is Jesus reinstates Peter. Jesus reinstates Peter. Our text for this passage will be seen from John 21, 15 to 25. John 21, 15 to 25. But before we go on to the passage, I would want us to memorize our verse for the week. And we can see this from 1 John 1.9. 1 John 1.9. Which says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. Could you please repeat after me? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. 
Amen. I will encourage you to take your time and memorize all the verses that comes along with the topics so that when we meet God willing in church, we will definitely give some prizes to the people who will be able to memorize all the verses we have done before during the lockdown. So we take our hymn from L8B 578. L8B 578. and pray Lord Jesus your word is perfect making wise the simple we humbly seek your insight and understanding speak to every need of ours and let your peace that surpasses all understanding remain with us even as we hear your sweet word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. I believe you have responded. I am so happy to come to you once again through this platform. I believe over the Easter holidays, you have been taking advantage of the holidays and have watched a lot of the Jesus stories. And today we are going to consider how Jesus has reinstated Peter. Peter is one of the disciples of Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ was feasting with them in the last moment, he did tell Peter that you were going to deny me three times. And I believe that during that time, Peter thought that, yes, me, I am going to do it. But Jesus knew that this is not going to be so. So, in the course of time, when Jesus was going through the trial, Peter did exactly what Jesus did said he denied Jesus three times saying I don't know what you are talking about to a small girl and another and the second time he said I don't know the man and on the third time he even called curses on himself by saying I don't know the man 
And we can see this one from Matthew 26, 69 to 78. The beauty and the good thing is that we always need to be conscious of what the Holy Spirit tells us. And so immediately, Peter denied that he didn't know this man. He remembered what Jesus said and went out. He walked out of the people bitterly and he wept. And this is a sign of repentance. Appeared to his disciples for the third for the third time. Let's see what Jesus did. You know, we, when we all watch the story over the holidays, the Easter holidays, we notice that Jesus appeared to his disciples on three occasions. First, Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene. Second, they were in the room when Jesus appeared. And this is the third time Jesus is appearing to the disciples. This same Peter was a fisherman before he, he met Jesus. So, when Jesus died and he knew that Jesus has risen, Peter was sitting down. He didn't know what to do. He says, hey man, let's go fishing. So, he went with some of the disciples and the whole night, he didn't catch even a single fish. So, they, they decided to come back to shore. And about 100 meters, when we read the story, about 100 meters to shore, Jesus was sitting there. And he shouted, Hi friends! How many fish have you got? There and there, the disciple Jesus laughed. Who is John? He said, Yeah, this is the Lord. Immediately Peter heard this one. He jumped from the boat and walk to go and see Jesus. What an exciting moment that will be. Very, very exciting. So what happened? They had their breakfast. Jesus was there already. He put fish on the, on, the, on, the, on the fire and was roasting. He had some bread and they really enjoyed themselves with their breakfast. So after this one, Everybody would have thought that, oh, we've had party together, so let's go rest. But you know, Jesus wanted to reinstate Peter. He wanted to restore Peter. So Peter, Jesus asked Peter also three times. What is the significance of this three times? Peter denied him three times public, publicly. And Jesus also asked Peter three times and it is also publicly. Let's take note of some of these things. And so, Jesus kept asking Peter. Peter, do you love me? And as part of the rest his restoration, Jesus gave Peter a great responsibility because when Jesus asks Peter, do you love me? Anytime he asks that question, his answer was, feed my lamb. Peter will say, I love you. And Jesus will say, take care of my sheep. The last time Jesus says, do you love me? And Peter was so worried. And he said, feed my sheep. What a great responsibility. If it was to be any of us would have said that, oh, Peter was not faithful. He betrayed me. He denied me. But you see, Jesus had prayed for him and he loved him. 
And immediately Peter repented, Jesus also restored him to his former position. Finally, Jesus required Peter to focus on his calling alone without concentrating on his own personal business. So the word was, follow me. Read the passage. You would enjoy it so well. In following Jesus, there is no room for selfishness. For those who genuinely want to serve the Savior Jesus Christ, there is no room for selfishness. Amen. What lessons do we pick from here? What lessons? Peter was one of the early disciples of Jesus who rose to become their leader and spokesman. He was quick to speak and slow to think. He acted on impulse and this often landed him in trouble. You know, Peter was like many of us today. But Jesus forgave Peter's failure and called him again to work for him. Lesson number two. Lesson number two. Jesus patiently bore with Peter's shortcomings. One of the most tender moments in Peter's life was when Jesus told Peter that Peter would deny him. Yet, Jesus still prayed that Jesus will not lose his faith. Peter did as Jesus predicted and denied Jesus three times. What do we see from here? What do we infer from here? What are the implications? What do we learn? We must also be willing and ready to live up to expectation. We should always be ready to forgive those who offend us. The last but not the least. Peter also discovered God's grace as he was given three opportunities to declare to declare his love again to the risen Christ. We can see this one in John 21, 15 to 23. And I'm pleading once again, take your time and read this passage. For me, you'd love it. So he got the opportunity to declare his love to the risen Christ. Jesus gave Peter a second chance. We should resolve to seek forgiveness and keep following Jesus anytime we fall or fail. If we fall away and come back to Jesus, he will gladly receive us provided we sincerely repent from our sins. Hallelujah. I would encourage all of us to read the book of John as we linger on and wait for the day we are going back to school and going back to work. All this time, we can have a very good interaction and closeness with the Lord by reading the book of John and then we can uplift ourselves once again. Our closing hymn will be from Praise Be Him 311. Praise Be Him 311.
We want to thank God for another wonderful time. Shall we bow our heads and pray? I want you to thank God for his word. Thank God for meeting your need in the word that has just come unto us. Pray and commit yourself to the Lord that in this time, in these times, that we find ourselves in the house, we will get closer and closer to him. That the Lord will continue to strengthen us and make us his people. As we pray, we are also going to pray and ask that the Lord will come and rule in the affairs of mankind. That when he went to the cross, he took away our sicknesses. He took away our infirmities. He took away our diseases. And we believe that he did exactly that for us. As he said, that Peter, I'm going to pray for you. We believe that the Lord really, indeed, went to the cross with all our sicknesses, our diseases, and our infirmities. So let's all pray and call on the Lord and say, Jesus Christ, as you have gone, we believe that you went to the cross with our sicknesses. So tonight, this morning, we bring Corona before your throne of grace. Lord, deal with it. And if any one of us have it, Lord, you have promised and you have said you took it away to the cross. Come and take it away from us. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you once again for your word. We thank you once again for the comfort in your word. We thank you once again for the insight, O oh Lord. We pray, O oh God, that we will not remain the same. That Lord, as day by day, we read your word, we hear your word, we ponder over your word. Father, change us and make us anew. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. We will hand over to Auntie Bridget to give us the announcement. Thank you. Children, children, and children, yes, abide in Christ. I'm sure you have been blessed by today's service as well. I want us to take note of this. You see, when Jesus was crucified, Peter went back to fishing, as we have been told. And he got people to go along with him. There were seven of them when Jesus met them at the beach. The things we said we have stopped to follow Jesus. Let us keep to it. Let us pray to God to give us the strength so we'll keep to it. So we keep doing the good things and then we stop doing the bad things. That way we make Jesus very, very happy. I want to ask you a question. If Jesus called you by name, like he called Peter and asked him whether he loved him, what would have been your answer? And what are you doing to show that you love him? Have you left all to follow him? Please, if you haven't, then this is the time to do so. If you have given your life to Jesus, this is the time to pray that he will keep you true and steadfast till he comes again. If you have never made that decision, this is the opportunity. That is why he came to die on the cross for our sins. This is the opportunity to say you are sorry and he would cleanse you. 
we have come to the end of today's service. But before we go, all those who celebrated their birthday during the past week, I want you to stand so mommy and your siblings and everybody there will join me sing happy birthday for you. Are you standing? All right, let's go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. How old are you now? 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 May God bless you now. 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 Hip, 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 hooray. Hip, 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 hooray. Hip, 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 hooray. God bless your new age. So, as we go through the week, those in drama, remember to learn your lines. Those choreography dancers, still learn the moves. And also, I want you to go to iCampus to study. And also, it's on the digital TV channels and also on DSTV. So you can go there, keep studying, keep studying your books, be good. When we come back to Sunday school, I'm sure you have lots of stories for us. Keep being good. And remember, next week is a review service. So, revise all we've done since the last review. And you know what you are going to do this time? When we ask questions and you know the answers, tell mommy or daddy you want to input it online. So, input your answers online so we get them. It's not a live service, so we'll not come to you immediately. But like we got back to Yofi on his question, we'll get back to you as well. And so, we come back to you next week. I want you to close your eyes so we commit ourselves into the hands of the Almighty. Please close your eyes. Our Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for your message that has come to us. We thank you for your grace which keeps on finding us even when we go astray. Father, we pray that even as you reinstated Peter, Lord, please reinstate us and let us be firmly grounded in you that we will not sway to go anywhere. Lord, we commit our week into your care. We pray that you continue to guard and guide us. We pray that you continue to protect us with our family and everyone. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so, we are going to share the grace together. Let's go. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I know you know this song. And we are going to end with this song. Because it is very, very meaningful to all that we have heard today. And it goes, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Listen to the verse 2. Do none go with me, I still will follow. Do none go with me, I still will follow. Do none go with me, I still will follow. 
No turning back, no turning back. And the last, the world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. God bless you, miss you all.